Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Connecting the past to the future, folk artist Edwin George creates paintings from his traditions, myths, and cultural heritage. I was born in, it's called Cherokee, North Carolina, back in the, towards Smoky Mountains. I live in the mountains, and, uh, and we lived in a log house. My mother had a wooden stove, and we had a fireplace. We didn't have no bed. I just sleep on the floor. It was just one big room. Didn't have no rooms. Yeah, I went to school, but I didn't finish. I just quit halfway to ninth grade. I didn't finish it. My daddy just brought me down here. I couldn't speak no English. I was speaking my own language, you know, it's, it's called Cherokee. Edwin George is almost a textbook example of what a folk artist is. He grew up in the Cherokee culture and community. He grew up using Cherokee language, which is now a rare form of language that very few practitioners use. And Ed is filled with the stories, the visual images, and the feeling of Cherokee culture. So when we see what Edwin does, we meet the Cherokee culture. So he signifies a community of folk art. Folk art is a distinctive type of art that is made by people who represent their own community's values, tastes, and aesthetics. A folk artist shares with the world what he or she has learned from community, from their family, even from within an occupation. It's the kind of art that happens when people transmit what they know in an oral, informal way. Say, an apprenticeship between a master artist and a younger person, or even within a family. Started in 1984, working against the university, and later on, I was sketching all the time. I was really, I was an artist and I, I just started my own. The self-taught artist. What I think is fascinating about Edwin George is in my experience he's one of the few people I know who essentially had a spiritual calling to start creating art. He came from an art community. He came from people within his own family who were master craftspeople, such as his mother's sister, who was a basket maker. And Ed was filled with stories from his Cherokee family. But something happened inside of him that made him just one day say, I have to put this in visual form. And pop, out came his artwork, which makes it very powerful, very immediate, and amazingly organized for a person who didn't learn in an apprentice fashion. Well, I always sit there, sometimes I think, should I paint this? Then if I can think a story, then I'll paint that. I dream sometimes. I can know one dream, I can get started. How the dog made the Milky Way. A Cherokee family found that something has been stealing cornmeal from their corn crib. They would make the cornmeal from beating the corn in a hollow log with a log beater. They decided to wait one night and watch the crib to see who was stealing the cornmeal. That night, they spotted a huge dog coming from the crib with cornmeal in his mouth. They grabbed their beaters and pans and raced out, making so much noise that the dog ran spilling the cornmeal from his mouth. He jumped up into the sky, and as he ran across the heavens, he scattered cornmeal. That white trail he left behind, we call the Milky Way. What is exciting to me about Edwin's painting is his remarkable use of color and design. He is extremely interested in what a field is. A field is something that we can consider the background for a subject. Edwin dissolves the difference between a subject and a field. Everything is happening together in the same plane at the same time. So it's a jam-packed visual. They're crowded together, but they're beautifully colored. And this motion that he builds into it makes for just a very exciting visual experience. 
first, the be surprised when I go to, I put four coats of white first. And when I get through, I go again about five, six times with a small brush. That's why it takes a long. I'll mix the color, all kinds of color. If it looks good, it goes on there. If it's pink, you put pink both sides, even it up. Well, I put a bird in that blue cook, cardinal, chickadee, and I put them in there. Next time I put, put flowers in there. How he came to understand how to do color coloration in that way is mysterious to me because it's as if he knew it from his dream state. And in fact, he talks about a lot of this as representing sort of spiritual interior parts of who he is. The color must be in his mind. Edwin does something rather interesting in his painting, and that is he represents the Cherokee syllabary, its language, which is different from what United States American alphabet is. It actually has 86 letters, and it's a rare language these days. So we have this interesting sense of painting as a way of preserving language. Just keep it like this, put it in there. And uh, if I put a rabbit, I call it jistu. I just put it in there. We call it squirrel. Shilolin, and Yona is a bear, so that's why I put it in there. We need artists like Edwin to understand what it means to be a person of history as you are an Ohioan. In Ohio, we're all here as migrants and immigrants in some fashion or another. My grandmother might have come from Russia. His grandparents came from North Carolina. We have a sense of history being enriched when we meet an artist who lets us see a little bit more toward the past and toward the future. Edwin won the Ohio Heritage Award because he's a clear master. There is no other person that I know of in the state of Ohio who does Cherokee art as beautifully, as competently as Edwin does. He came to it late in life, that's a fact, but he came fully blown just like Venus out of the clamshell from mythology. Edwin had been thinking Cherokee thoughts and Cherokee images his whole life. So he started out rather masterfully, which is a surprise because, say, in fiddle tradition, it takes years to build expertise. Edwin has expertise, he's got importance as a bearer of a specific cultural tradition, and he shares it broadly with the public. And that is what the Ohio Heritage Award recognizes. <laughs>